I'm confident that a lot of healthcare professionals or just healthy people in general can relate when I say that it's sometimes frustrating when someone you care a lot about, family, friends, they don't prioritize their own health as much as you wish they did. And I'm happy to say that I might have made a little bit of progress with my mom recently. And this isn't about trying to force your own value system and telling people what they should or shouldn't do. It's about educating people and giving them the whole picture so they can make their own informed decisions as to how much they want to prioritize their health and sacrifice eating certain foods that they enjoy versus exercising versus, you know, whatever, whatever lifestyle choices they want to make based on their own set of priorities. So by giving my mom access to levels and more specifically two months of CGMs, continuous glucose monitors, here is what happened. Levels for my mom. First thing we do is we want to scan this serial number that's on the transmitter box. Take a photo. So essentially first you, you get the transmitter, you get the sensor. This is going to last for several weeks. This is going to last, I think it's like six weeks, something like that. This will last 10 days. So even though you're going through new sensors, you're going to reuse this. This is going to pop out and you're going to put in the new one. Do you want to clean the surface? Right. Clean the skin. So you do it. So you're doing it in the, the area that's kind of fleshy over here on the back of the arm. Okay. By the tricep. So you do circle and you do like that. So I have to do this myself From for the second out. one. Yeah. I do it in a mirror in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then this part, you don't want to touch this. I'll keep that clean so it has tabs. Ah. Break off the tab. Okay. And then we got it here. And then you press the button when you're ready. That's it? That's it. I didn't even feel anything. Exactly, yeah. I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> and then this transmitter, so on the app, I'm going to say uh, yes, we added the sensor. So this is the, that is the and sensor. The transmitter. And this is the transmitter. How transmitter pops in. Wait, is there something that pops in? The transmitter pops into the, the plastic piece. Okay. And now, it's connecting. 12 seconds later. It's not painful or anything. I was saying I feel a little needle or something. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. You don't feel anything. Yeah. Is there. it there? <laughs> Is there? Yeah, it's on your arm. Okay. We should have done this in a mirror in hindsight so that you can see how I'm doing it and like it's yeah. easier for you next time, but you yeah. can just watch the video, I guess. Yeah. And then I have to put that sticker on it. Yeah. So this is, um, it just helps keep it in place and make sure it doesn't get dislodged. Right. But this is the little sensor cover. High tech. Oh. What did you say about this? That's what? It's very high tech. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it says Bluetooth pairing request. Dexcom would like to pair, so we hit pair. So start sensor. Now in the first two hours, you want to avoid eating anything because it's trying to calibrate and set your baseline. Okay. So if your sugar's all over the place, it's gonna be inaccurate. Then you'll have to manually recalibrate with a uh, finger brick. So don't eat for two hours. And after two hours, this will be done. And you can either open the Dexcom app or you can open up the Levels app. We're gonna be mostly using the Levels app because then you can actually input your food, your exercise, your sleep, etc. I see. And then we'll, we'll learn about how to control your blood sugar. Improve your metabolic health. Cool. So, do I have to do anything, any calibration or anything or is it automatically if I do? The cool thing is it's Bluetooth streaming. So you don't need to scan it like for 10 days. You just let it sit. You will open the Levels app to input every time you eat a food and then we're done. After 10 days, you take it off, put on a new one. Nice. Nice. Now I can put this sticker on? Yeah. Right? Yep, everything's fine. Water, the if you stickiness wanna, doesn't if you get away. want to swim. Yeah. And if this cover comes off, you can always apply. They give you a few extras. Yeah. You can always put another one. They give plenty of extras. Very nice. Cool. So cool. Now you're a cyborg. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome. So this is my mom. And I've been on my mom's case for a few years because you've been in the pre-diabetic range. Hemoglobin A1C between 6 to 6.4 is pre-diabetic, 6.5 and up is diabetes. And you've been around 6.2, 6.3? Yes. Most recently 6.4? Recently 6.4. Which we don't like. I think the first step was helping you understand that pre-diabetes is not okay. Just because it's not full-blown diabetes doesn't mean that it's, oh, I'm chilling here, I'm good. So you've been in that range for a few years. I got on your case 
You call me a drill sergeant many times. Anytime I would tell you, hey mom, exercise more. Hey mom, don't eat this. And more recently, your hemoglobin A1C hasn't really improved, right? Despite putting in some effort. So then I was thinking, what can further help you in this effort? And Levels has been super helpful for me. I'm always wearing one. It's given me a lot of insights. So I figured, okay, let's try it for my mom. And what's your experience been so far? It's been great. I like it. Yeah, what have you learned? I've learned that things which I thought are safe to eat, you know, for pre-diabetes or even diabetes. There, there's not much sugar, there's protein in this, there's fiber. But when I used to eat it and look at the, on my app, it's showing that I'm spiking, you know? So obviously my perception was incorrect and it's difficult to know, you know, if you just go by the packaging, you don't know how, how it's going to react, I guess. So what are those surprise foods? So one was lentils. I have a big bowl of lentil. I think I'm putting, you know, ha having very, uh, it's very healthy. But then I was spiking a lot with that. Another thing was apples. I thought is the less sweet fruit because I don't have oranges. I don't have pears. I don't have all the nice, nice, juicy, juicy stuff. And I was having just apples. And then the red apple is not as good as the Granny Smith apple with the peanut butter. And how did you, you learn that the Granny Smith is better? Uh, Levels actually has, a, this app actually tells you, you know, alternatives, a great job, good ingredients, and then they'll give you some tips and then, you know, try to substitute this for this. So if I put in brown rice, they don't have brown rice, have cauliflower rice instead. So I thought brown rice is good, you know? I mean, as long as I have a little bit of brown rice, it's got a lot of fiber and this, that, but I guess you're still spiking and with cauliflower rice, it's only veggies. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a smaller spike. So then behaviorally, beyond the actual food choices, which is really insightful, right? Because you've been doing the finger pricks, but you can't like take a million finger pricks after a single meal because there's gonna be a curve and you can't time your pricks exactly so that you're gonna find the, the peak of that curve. So um, the food insights are obviously very helpful. What about behaviorally? Have you changed anything like with sleep or exercise or order at which you eat or when you eat, anything like that? Yes. One change I made recently was they say eat earlier in the day. So what I started doing is I've started having my last meal around five o'clock and then I go for a long walk after that. Instead of going for a walk first, you know, up the hill, I used to go up the hill. So it's a cardio exercise also. But then when I come back and eat, you know, and then going for another 30 minute walk, never used to, I never used to make it. So I've started, I've changed that. So I've started having my dinner much earlier and then go for a one hour walk after that. Yeah, doing the walks after the meal rather than before are gonna be more effective. Um, I found personally for myself, if I do intense exercise before intense cardio, then I can do it before eating and it's fine. But if it's gonna be mild to moderate cardio, like walking or yeah. kind of zone two stuff, yeah. then doing it after the meal is gonna be way more beneficial. Right, right. Another thing which I liked about Levels is it's told me, the, from the feedback, whenever I say I'm having pistachios, my my blood levels, my glucose doesn't go up. So I said, great, that's a nice snack to have, you know, when I'm hungry. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm happy about that. I found something I like. So you're learning things that do work, learning things that don't work. Yeah. You were telling me about your muscle mass too. What was, what was that about? What I have learned is I feel uh, that, you know, because I don't have much muscle, I'm not burning up the glucose. It's not- You would have like a larger glucose sink for the, so essentially if you were to have a meal heavy in carbohydrates and you had more muscle mass, you could better absorb that Correct. and distribute it without spiking as highly. Right. Versus having less muscle mass. Right, that's what I feel, I have less muscle mass and that's why I have to start doing, you know, some weight training or something like to incre increase my muscle mass. Good for bone density too. Yeah, true. What is nice about the app is they give you recipes. So like I make that cauliflower spears, which you like, right? It's from, Levels. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, so they give you nice recipes to try. They like this uh, cauliflower thing or, you know, other things that are there. So I've picked up one or two recipes from there. There was a, there's an almond bread, there's a cloud bread. Cloud bread is just cream cheese and uh, eggs. So, you know, so you're not, you don't feel deprived. So you can have that. You can put jam, not jam. You can put some more butter on it or some hummus or something. So oh. any, anytime I put hummus and broccoli, Good job, <laughs> you know, like the like great it's ingredients, yeah. huh? and I get fifty points. And they have the scores and stuff to kind of game, <laughs> gamify it. Yeah. Cool. So we're on the end of your second sensor, and yeah. the levels box comes with three. So let's go install that. Love your YouTube star.
it's quite a long thing but it's so fine you don't even feel it there you go So I am Harleen and I'm Kevin Jubal's mother. You know Kevin Jubal, the YouTube star. And why are we why are we here today, Mom? Is it your chance to finally break through and become a YouTube yeah, star? Yeah, so I'm following in his footsteps. I'm going to become a YouTube star too. <laughs> let's let's start from the beginning. I got on your case ever since I was probably in the last couple of years of medical school because you started sharing with me some of your labs from the doctor and the one that stuck out was your hemoglobin a1c being around 6.2 6.3 in the pre-diabetic range so let's start there what what was happening at that time so you know i was always under the impression pre-diabetes is fine you know like having a little bit of sugar and i'm not i haven't cut over that threshold to be diabetic i always thought it's fine so you know you're on my case and i'm saying you know he's just just because he's become a doctor now he keeps telling me what to do let me just eat and you know eat a little bit now and then i'll go someplace i'd have a little bit of sweet because i just couldn't resist it but then you know you've been sharing stuff with me this podcast that podcast and then i myself started listening to stuff when i when i learned that it's actually is very important to control it now because it starts alzheimers and all those awful things heart disease and everything with a little bit of sugar you know so your your body is actually struggling it is adapting with that sugar still there but you know you're still living but you're not living i mean your met metabolic your metabolism is not the best it could be right yeah so i think i think the problem that often occurs for a lot of people who become healthcare professionals and they try educating their parents is that the parents have seen you as a kid and it's always been like, hey, I'm the parent, I'm the one who knows what's up here. I'm the one who's gonna be calling the shots. So when the child now, the son, the daughter is like, oh, hey, you know, I'm now a medical professional. I'm an MD, I'm an NP, I'm a PA, I'm whatever. And let me try educating and helping my parents. They're like, yeah, like, I know what I'm doing. Like, chill out, kid. And you don't necessarily have that same problem with random patients that you're just meeting that day in clinic. Um, because they're only knowing you as an adult once you're, you know, fully trained, etc. So I think, I think now we're all on the same page that diabetes is not like a binary thing. Because I think maybe what was happening earlier is when I was, like, you know, getting on your case about let's improve, like pre-diabetes is not okay. I think maybe it's because my personality, I'm pretty strict, and the standards that I hold myself and the people around me to may be stricter at times than what other people think is reasonable. So then you're probably eh, like, pre-diabetes is probably fine. Kevin's just being crazy and like trying to optimize his whatever. Uh, because I've always been more quantified in terms of like wanting to track various things. And you've been a little bit more normal. I'm like, I'm the weird one here. I'm the one that's kind of out there. Yeah, you're weird. Definitely weird. Definitely weird. So the spectrum of diabetes is, it's not like a binary thing. There's, there's good metabolic health and then there's various levels of dysfunction. So pre-diabetes is already, dysfunction is occurring. Even prior to pre-diabetes, dysfunction is occurring. And then once you get diabetes, that's a greater level of dysfunction, but you're not on you know, exogenous insulin yet, insulin that you're injecting, that's another level of dysfunction. So there's a spectrum here. It's not just like, a, oh, diabetes on off switch. I think that was the first hurdle. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, because now I realize it is, it is actually serious even if you're not Full, full, full blown diabetes, even when you're pre-diabetes, you should be working on fixing it. Yeah. So you finally agreed to trying out levels and we got you signed up for two full months using a continuous glucose monitor. How did that go? What was your experience like? Like, um, I thought I had everything under control. I was pretty good with eating and you know, and once in a while I would have toast and we flour and things like that once in a while but then i saw that even with healthy stuff that i thought was healthy i was still spiking a lot and that sort of like you know it was reset okay so let me see i started monitoring what am i eating and 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 putting it into the app which is which is great you know you can sort of uh, see what you've eaten because you forget what you ate yesterday or day before and you know how how much it spiked and then uh, how you're able to change because the way you're eating or the sequence of food that you have you know it doesn't have to be you have to you can start with some fat first 
and then eat other things that spike. So then it is, it's a lower spike, you know, it sort of gets blunted. So, which is very helpful. So that's what I did today. I had a lot of guac and I had some toast and I didn't spike as much. So why is that? What, what did the guac do? The guac has fat and omega-3, right? So it sort of uh, slows down the digestion. Yeah, so when, you, when you're combining the different macronutrients and not just sugar alone, but sugar with protein and fats, that tends to have a more favorable response. Right. What are, what are some of the other lessons that you've learned and that um, you've implemented? Because like, I don't think it's reasonable to say that I'm never gonna spike ever again, right? I, I had a sandwich for lunch and using my, my CGM, it, I think I went to like 140 and you know, it was, a, it was a spike and it wasn't optimal. So it's, it's also like trying to figure out what is reasonable and sustainable and people have different goals. I think staying below 140 is a good goal, but you know, maybe, maybe for you, your goal is different than mine. Yeah, it's not, it has to be sustainable because uh, otherwise, like, you know, you say, if it's always going to tell me I'm spiking and I can't eat this and you know, I'm not going to follow it. Right. So what I try to do now, I know it'll spike, but I try for the spike not to be more than about 40, 45 even you know going up to 50 because i know they are very strict but i am still in the beginning phases i'm still learning so even if i think i'm doing well if it just spikes 50 and and then you know it starts uh, uh, when you say 50 do you mean over your baseline or or 150 what are you what are you saying there uh over the baseline so if i'm baseline at and then sometimes also it is going, you know, it is warning me that my sugar is going too low. Like if I'm going on a walk and it's going too low and I'm feeling fine. But soon after that, about 15, 20 minutes later, I'm feeling very, very exhausted and very weak. So it's a good thing to be able to monitor, to see, you know, if you're too low, have some snacks with you, which you can eat, right? And luckily I had snacks, I sat in my car and I had some nuts and things like that. So I started feeling better. But uh, yeah, it is, it sort of gives you more insight into how your body is using your glucose and how it is reacting to the food that you, uh, you know? That's awesome. It, what are some behavior changes that you experimented with that gave you, like what, what are the things that you learned during your two months? Things that worked, things that didn't work, some lessons that you're gonna keep using moving forward? Yeah, so what I've learned is, uh, having all these healthy foods like nuts, you know, walnuts, almonds, pistachios. I can eat as much as I want and nothing happens to my blood glucose, which is great when I want to snack, I can snack on those, right? Instead of having chips, now I haven't touched Doritos in over two, two and a half, three months. I know you always used to say, don't have Doritos. And uh, it was like, you know, once in a while I used to feel like having them. But now when I feel like having something salty, I go for pistachios, you know, a few pistachios, it, it, it sort of satiates my craving and I feel okay, you know? So uh, I know it has a lot of calories, I'll become fat, but it is at least my blood is under control and I can, you know, have it in moderation. Well, one thing I've, I've noticed that I think is a, a great thing is that you are caring much more about your health now than you did even a year ago. And you're being much more intentional with your exercise, you're doing both cardio as well as strength training now and those things also have overlap with your metabolic health and i've also started having i started making some special kind of roti now with flaxseed because i saw in one of the videos with the doctor what's her name casey means casey uh -huh. she was saying flaxseed meal tortillas tortillas you can <laughs> so i make my own now you can say tortillas uh, so I make my own and I have that with my vegetables, you know, Indian vegetable and curry and whatever. I have that instead, which just is, is just as good. So maybe I'll make those for you next time you're here. You'll say, oh, wow, you don't have to have quinoa roti. You'll have flaxseed roti. I like it. How is the experience actually using the app? I think the app is very user friendly, very. Uh, it took me a little while to get to understanding the metrics, which also helps, you know, if you can, it, it gives you all these suggestions, you know, what does this mean? How did your, how did yesterday go for you, et cetera, et cetera. And then it sort of dissects that for you, which is good. Going back to exercise, one thing I've noticed is how exercise will blunt a sugar spike very significantly, even something like a walk. But today I did, uh, after I ate the sandwich, I got right on the stationary bike and did a workout. 
So I'm wondering if you had any insights. Have you have you looked at your sugar with exercise and with proximity to food at all? Yeah. So after eating, it definitely you know doesn't go as high, doesn't spike. It starts going leveling off. It stays and then it starts going down. You know. So even if I do like, it's not a very uh, it's not a very leisurely walk. It is just in moderate pace. So you know, I do quite. Uh, I I see that uh, it it makes a difference to the. Glucose. Who do you think that this is a, a a recommended tool for? So obviously people like me that like data and tracking various metrics, but for someone like you who's again not as like data focused and tracking all these various things, was it still a user friendly experience? It was. Besides being user friendly, I think it was a useful experience in the sense it gave me a lot of insight into how I can manage my. Health. Because now, earlier it was always when my doctor used to say it's time to get your blood glucose, and I, you know, I'm all pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Then you know, let me manage my food a little bit before I go for my blood test because she's going to get mad. She might put me on medication, right? Now I'm waiting. You know, I've been so good for the last two months, and my doctor is not calling me. And so finally, I sent her an email. I said, "When is my A1C due?" <laughs> because I want to show her I've done well. You know. So I'm going to go maybe in a, tomorrow or day after and have my blood glucose drawn and see what is my A1C like. Yeah, and we can we can discuss even hemoglobin A1C is a good and useful test, but there's variation because it's looking at the average level of glycosylation, the amount of glucose on the hemoglobin, which is like a rough estimate of the average blood sugar over the last three months. But it can vary up or down depending on how long your red blood cells are in circulation before they get broken down. So it's not super reliable.、Um, it's good to kind of see the trend going up or down, but then we can also discuss other tasks that you can do to monitor your metabolic health and hopefully improve that over time. Sounds good. Cool. Anything else you want to add, Mom? I'm glad you introduced this to me. I'm、awesome. glad you're so focused on my health and your health and Aaron's health. You know, always pushing us. Do better. Do better. Do better. So glad for that. Thank you. Please subscribe. Thumbs up. Give a thumbs up. Like. Subscribe. <laughs> You're a natural mom. I'm happy. That feels like a a big win, a big step in the right direction. Some meaningful change being enacted, being sustained, and I'm really happy about that. So, big thanks to Levels for making this possible. Big thanks to them for supporting me and my channel for so many years. I really love the product that they made. And the mission that drives them. And if you want to try Levels yourself, then visit the link in the description where you'll get two months for free off of your annual membership. Hope you guys enjoy. Much love, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, I want to be all proper now because I'm on YouTube. I'm going to be a YouTube star. It's very high tech.